Well, hello there, and welcome to Reading Through the Bible with Elder Linda. So glad you joined me. For those that are new to the channel, I'm Elder Linda Anderson. And what we do here on this channel is that we are actually reading through the Bible, just as the name implies. Um, we started with Genesis chapter 1. We are now on Genesis chapter 39. Uh, but what we do is we read through the Bible together. We make sure we understand what we're reading. And then we make application to our lives. Uh, I post a new video every Wednesday. Sometimes it's up on YouTube as early as Tuesday evening. Uh, but I definitely, uh, by Wednesday, yeah, the video is posted, a new video each week. So anyway, I'm glad you joined me. Give me a thumb up or uh, subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined to, and I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, but last week we were talking about, uh, we were in Genesis chapter 38, and we talked about Tamar and Judah. That was a very interesting subject because Tamar was Judah's daughter-in-law, and uh, Judah had given her to his oldest son, Ur, who ended up dying. And then Onan uh, took his place and was supposed to uh, have a child for his brother Ur, and Odin refused to do that, which was a, a liberate duty that they, a law that they had that they used to do. And since he refused to do that, God killed him as well. And Judah's third son was Sheila, S H E L A H, which he was supposed to give to Tamar uh, once he grew up, but he refused because he didn't want Sheila to die just like Ur and Odin had died. And, and Ur had died because God said he was wicked. It didn't tell us why he died, but it just said that Ur was a wicked person and God killed Ur. Then Onan took his place and refused to do his duties to uh, uh, raise a child for his brother Ur who had died. Uh, so God killed Onan. And then the third son, Judah refused to give to Tamar. And, you know, it's kind of like a, one of those, oh my goodness, that happened in the Bible stories. Um, but Tamar ended up uh, tricking Judah, who was her father-in-law, into uh, having intercourse with her. And she um, had two sons. And those sons were recognized because uh, when he found out that who she was, he didn't know who she was when he had sex with her. But afterwards, he found out who she was and he honored her. And uh, her two sons actually received a portion of the inheritance. So anyway... <clears throat> Interesting story for last week, but this week we're on Genesis chapter 39. Uh, and in this chapter, we're going to, because you know, the story of Tamar and Judah seems like something just kind of threw in because we were talking about Joseph in chapter 37, and then we get this chapter about Tamar and Judah. Um, but now we're going back to talking about Joseph, and we know Joseph is a very important figure uh, in, a, in our history, in our biblical history. Uh, because he's going to be the one that God's going to use to deliver his people and save them from a great famine. So uh, that's why we're talking about him right now. So in uh, Genesis chapter 39, we're talking about how Joseph arrives in Egypt. Because remember, his brothers had sold him um, to uh, uh, some traveling uh, merchants. And the merchants took him to Egypt and sold him to Potiphar. So Joseph is basically is a slave right now. And uh, he becomes Potiphar's slave. And in this chapter, we're going to talk about how Potiphar's wife takes a liking to him. Hmm. Very interesting. And ends up getting him thrown into prison. So let's just read about that. And before we start, let's just start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We magnify you. Holy Spirit, we're asking you right now to just come in and be the teacher. Help us to understand those things that were written, oh God. You said they were written for our learning, oh God. Help us to, to learn what we need to learn from the Old Testament and from those things that you've placed there. Because Father, we know that every single word in your scriptures is important to us, oh God, and it's something that we need to learn from. So we thank you, Father, for your holy word. Make it real to us in Jesus' name, amen. So amen, let's read about that. And we're gonna to go to Genesis chapter 39. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. You can read from any um, Bible that you have. It's fine. Uh, I just like, prefer the New Living Translation, as I've said many times, uh, because of its clarity. And they, it talks in our language. So we're in Genesis chapter 39. <clears throat> it says, When Joseph was taken, was taken to Egypt by the Ishmaelite traders, he was purchased by Potiphar, an Egyptian officer. 
Potiphar was captain of the guard for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. The Lord was with Joseph. Take note of that. So he succeeded in everything he did as he served in the home of his Egyptian master. Potiphar noticed, his, noticed this, noticed that the Lord was with him, and realized that the Lord was with Joseph, giving him success in everything he did. This pleased Potiphar. So he soon made Joseph his personal attendant, and he put him in charge of his entire household and everything he owned. From the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord began to bless Potiphar's household for Joseph's sake. All his household affairs ran smoothly and his crops and livestock flourished. Verse six. So Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned. With Joseph there, he didn't worry about a thing except what kind of food to eat. Joseph was a very handsome and well-built young man. And Potiphar's wife soon began to look at him lustfully. Come and sleep with me, she demanded. But Joseph refused. Look, he told her, my master trusts me with everything in his house, in his entire household. No one here has more authority than I do. He has held back nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How could I do such a, a wicked thing? It would be a great sin against God. Verse 10, she kept putting pressure on Joseph day after day, but he refused to sleep with her and he kept, and he kept out of her way as much as possible. One day, however, no one else was around when she went in to do, when he went in to do his work. She came and grabbed him by his cloak demanding, come on, sleep with me. Joseph tore himself away, but he left his cloak in her hand as he ran from the house. When she saw that he was, hold, that she was holding his cloak and he had fled, she called out to her servants. Soon all the men came running. Look, she said, my husband has brought this Hebrew slave here to make fools of us. He came into me, into my room to rape me, but I screamed. And when he heard me scream, he ran outside and got away, but he left his cloak behind with me. She kept the cloak with her until her husband came home. Then she told, her, told him her story. That Hebrew slave you brought into our house tried to come in and fool around with me, she said. But when I screamed, he ran outside, leaving his cloak with me. So she's telling her husband the same lie. Verse 19, Potiphar was furious when he heard his wife's story about how Joseph had treated her. So he took Joseph and threw him into prison where the king's prisoners were held. And there he remained. But the Lord was with Joseph. You hear that again. But the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and showed him his faithful love. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. Before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything that happened in the prison. The warden had no more worries because Joseph took care of everything. The Lord was with him and caused everything he did to succeed. All right. So here we have Joseph in Egypt. And he's uh, the slave. He's become the slave of Potiphar. And Potiphar is a person of uh, high position. So Potiphar wasn't just anybody, but he was a person of high position that held a, a high position in Pharaoh's court. He housed all of Pharaoh's um, um, wardens and prisoners that Pharaoh sent that came from, the cap from uh, Pharaoh's courts. So let's just get into some of this. Um, well, first of all, it's verse one. It says, when Joseph was taken to Egypt by the Ishmaelites traders, he was purchased by Potiphar, an Egyptian officer. So when we read this, Joseph is actually being set up so he can be raised up. Can we say he's being set up so he can be raised up? This is no coincidence. You know, as a child of the king, there's no coincidences in our lives. Whatever happens to us, 
it's by design. God has a plan and a purpose for it. And, and, and even things that happen that maybe doesn't look like it was in the plan, God's going to work it out so that it'll work out for our good. So we, we can't, we can't lose. We can't lose as, as child, as people of the King, as his children, because he has our life mapped out and planned for us. He's looking after us. He has a plan for each one of us. It might not look right. And I'm sure Joseph probably wasn't happy about the fact that I am a slave in this man's house. But God had a plan. Joseph was being set up to be raised up. So remember that. Potiphar um, is over all the wardens of the prisons in Egypt. So like I said, Potiphar had a high position. In verse 2, it talks about, uh, just some notes that we jotted down here, we want to remember. But just like Joseph, we will be victorious and successful in every situation we are put in because God is with us. And we want to take note of that. Remember I told you to take note of that in verse 2, it says, the Lord was with Joseph. Now here he is in Egypt and people that don't know God and God is with him. So no matter where you are, remember God is with you. He's with you wherever you are. When you said yes to Jesus, the Holy Spirit came to live inside of you. He's living inside of you now. Jesus in the form of the Holy Spirit, he's in there, three in one. You have the whole package living inside of you. So wherever you go, you take him with you. People around you can see the favor of God on your life, and they know God is with you. And I want you to re remember that because people around you will look at you and wonder what's different about you. And oftentimes, uh, God will open doors for you that other people wonder, well, how did she get that position? How did he get that position? Uh, what makes them so special? It's called the favor of God. Hallelujah. God has favor. He puts favor on his children. He promised that he would never leave us and never forsake us. Here, uh, Joseph is in Egypt and God is right there with him. In verse four, Joseph was faithful where he was as a slave and then as a prisoner. We're going to talk about the prisoner in a minute. But Joseph was promoted because God was with him. Got to keep that in mind. God is with you. Emmanuel, God is with us. So don't be surprised when God begins to promote you and, and to uh, uh, give you favor even on your job, wherever you are, wherever you're working, uh, God is going to give you favor because you belong to him. But also, uh, one key that we have to look at, Joseph was faithful. So it wasn't just that God gave him favor and he was a slouch and just didn't do anything. Joseph it moved in a spirit of excellence. Everything he did, he did the best he could do because God was with him. And we have to do the best that we can do. No matter where you are, always remember that whatsoever you do, you do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto man. There's a scripture that says that because you, God is watching you all the time. Uh, so it's not enough to just to do, to be um, men pleasers and just do it because somebody's watching you. But we want to move in integrity because integrity means, and Joseph obviously had this integrity. He did a good job wherever he was. And that's the uh the way we want to live the way we want to be we want to be as christians whatever we do we do it well because we're doing it to please god and not men amen in matthew 25 21 it reminds us that if we are faithful with the things god has given us god will bless us with greater things and the new living translation reads well done my good and faithful servant you have been faithful in handling the small, this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. That's a principle of God. You got to be faithful where you are. You got to be faithful doing what you're supposed to do right now. And God will give you more. Uh, one of the sisters that used to go to our church, she gave a, a message one time. And she said she wanted a, a bigger house. And God told her to be faithful with that small kitchen floor. And he was going to give her a bigger kitchen floor. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you got to be faithful with that if you want God to bless you with more. He's not going to give you more if you're not being faithful with the little bit that you have right now. So whatever you have right now, do 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 good by it. Do, you know, do it well. If it's your home, keep your home clean. Keep it spotless. You know, 
uh, uh, if it's your job, do the best job you can do, you can do, whether your boss is looking over your shoulder or not. Amen. Because God is watching. So in verse five, it says, God blessed the Egyptian's house because of Joseph. And this is a fulfillment of scripture that we have in Genesis chapter 12, that God said we were going to be a blessing. So just because Joseph was there, the Egyptian's house was blessed. Potiphar's house was blessed. And guess what? Just because we're here, you, you know, just because we're here in this earth, the earth is being blessed right now. God is, is looking after the whole, that he hasn't come back and he hasn't destroyed the earth because we're still here. And, and how do I know that? Because remember when he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and he, Abraham told him, he said, well, if you have just 50 righteous people, would you spare the city? And God said, yes. If there's 50 righteous people, I will spare the city. Well, if there's 45, would you spare? I, yes, I will spare the city for 45 righteous people. And they kept going down and down to the number. I think they got down to 10. If there's just 10 righteous people, would you spare the city? God said, yes, I will spare the city for 10 righteous people. So I know that when the righteous are there, there's a blessing. And God, God will treat that place a little bit different because a righteous person is there. So wherever you are, that place is being blessed because you are there. So remember that. You're a child of the king. Verse 6, we should always walk in, 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 in our integrity. Potiphar had complete trust in Joseph and he only worried about what he was going to eat. That's a lot of trust. Now, mind you, Joseph has went from, um, he's gone from, from the prison to the palace. He's gone from uh, being uh, from being a slave to the palace. You know, he's 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 been elevated. Joseph's being elevated. So God blessed the Egyptians' house because of Joseph. You know, he was his brothers had put him in that uh, that cistern in that hole. So he he was uh, an underdog, but now God is blessing him and blessing Potiphar because of him. So this is a fulfillment, fulfillment of the promise that uh, we'll be a blessing wherever we go. So um, Potiphar had complete trust in him and hopefully our bosses have complete trust in us. Um, they should feel like if they leave us, uh, we're going to still, they come back, we'll still be doing what we're supposed to do because that's, what it's, that's how we're supposed to operate. In verse 7, it said, the devil will always be faithful to try and tempt us when we begin to rise in the Lord. So Potiphar was crazy about Joseph. Jo Joseph was his attendant. And here comes the devil in the form of Potiphar's wife. Joseph looked good. He was a young man. Uh, and she probably wasn't bad looking herself because Potiphar probably could have had any woman that he wanted to. He had a, a pretty high position. And, um, and maybe she didn't like the fact that, that Joseph wasn't drooling over her. So she wanted to seduce him and she was trying her best to seduce him. And he kept saying no. He kept saying no and resisting her and telling her it was a wicked thing for him to do that. My master gives me everything but you. Why would I do that wicked thing? So Joseph still showing his integrity. Integrity in his work ethic and integrity in his morals. Verse 10, it talks about um, how she kept putting pressure on him. Now, this should remind us of something because the enemy never stops trying to break us down, hoping for a weak point or a moment that he can make us fall into sin. There's a lot of parallels with Joseph's life here that we can uh, uh, attribute to our life and, and, and see the uh, examples that he, that he gave us because the enemy never stops trying to break us down, just like she's trying to break Joseph down. The enemy always waits for a weak spot, always waits for uh, a time when, when you're not on your guard for him to, to move in and, uh, okay, I got you, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep flashing this, this, this gorgeous, this gorgeous man in front of you. And, uh, one of these days you're going to fall from because you're going to be weak. Or well, I'm going to keep flashing this woman before you because you know, you're not supposed to be with this woman. And one of these days you're going to be weak and fall. And, and maybe it's not a man or a woman. Maybe it's something else that you're, that you're seeing. Maybe it's a vice that God has told you not to do anymore, uh, whether it's drinking or smoking that he's taken away from you. And, it, and the enemy keeps trying to bring it back on you. But he's going to keep trying until he finds a weak point. 
So because of the devil's constant attacks, it tells us in 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9, that we must be on the alert at all times. Let's read that. It says, stay alert. Watch out for our great enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. It didn't say he was a, he wasn't lying, but he said like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He's on his J-O-B 24-7. So that's why you need to, st you need to stay prayed up. You need to stay uh, anointed, stay in the spirit, stay alert. Pay attention to what you're listening to. Because sometimes that's a, that's a doorway. Listening to something you shouldn't be listening to. And maybe it's some, some, some you know, music that, that, that takes you there. And you don't need to be going there because you, you don't need to be doing certain things. So maybe you shouldn't be listening to that kind of music. Cut it off if it's going to get you in a mood where it's going to make you want to call up uh, 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 Jody or somebody. Don't, don't listen to that stuff. You know, because you know it's going to take you there. And you don't need that temptation. So certain things you need to learn how to be alert and, and, and shut the door before it even gets opened. Because the enemy, all he needs is just a little crack so he can start getting in. Yeah, you know you're lonely. Yeah, you know you need this. And yeah, you this. You know, and one thing leads to another. So, you know, you want to close that door and keep yourself elevated and occupied and keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Verse 9, uh, we're still in 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. Verse 9 says, stand firm against him, talking about the devil, and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. Because that's a, oftentimes a trick of the enemy too, to make us think that you're the only one suffering like this. But if you can just keep in your mind, no, oh, you, you've tried this, this same lie on other people. You've attacked other ones with this. And we are triumphant. We are victorious. We are winning this battle. Amen. Verse 12 talks about how Joseph, uh, how Joseph did the right thing to get out of there fast. He ran, he ran out of his clothes. She grabbed him because she was, she said, no, nah, no, nah, buddy, you're going you gonna to sleep with me right now. And so she was going to force him to have sex with her. This young man ran out of his clothes. First Corinthians confirmed that we are to flee from sexual sin. And let's read that in first Corinthians chapter, um, first Corinthians chapter eight, verse 18. It says, run from sexual sin. I'm sorry, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. <clears throat> it says, run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. Again, it said, run from sexual sin. Don't even play with that stuff. Don't, don't. You don't even want to put yourself in compromising situations. Don't be someplace where it's just you and that person because you are going to fall, people. I, I'm telling you, our flesh is some is strong and you know sometimes we we might get super spiritual and think i can handle it ah i beg to differ because that flesh gets in a compromising situation you're going to end up saying god forgive me because you're going to end up falling don't get into compromising situations so um just just remember don't 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 put yourself in situations that that you can't get out of so in it says in first corinthians it says run from sexual sin no other sin so clearly affects the body as the one as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? God lives inside of you. This is a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God. You do not belong to yourself. For God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. Now, I'm, this is not Linda's words. This is what the Bible's saying, that we have to honor God with our bodies. What is that saying? We can't do any and everything. We, we shouldn't be sleeping around with everybody that's, that, that happens to come up. No, no. Now, now do we fall sometimes? Yes, because we're not perfect. Jesus came and died for that, for us to say, God, forgive me. Help me to be stronger. Help me in this area. God's not going to knock you off the face of the earth because you slipped and fell. But, but we shouldn't be practicing sin. You shouldn't be in a place where you think it's okay to constantly be falling, constantly do that. No, keep crying out to God to deliver you because your body is a temple. 
and it needs to be kept for the Lord. Amen. And God can keep you. I'm a witness that God can keep you. Amen. Uh, verse 13 through 20. Although, although his uh, Potiphar's wife is cooking up this scheme and she meant it for evil. God's got another plan. God meant it for good. Now, it seems like a horrible thing that's going on because she's cooking up this scheme and, and she's going to try and get him in her bed and, and all this stuff. But God knows what's, what's happening and God knows that this situation is going to get Joseph just where I want him to be, right in the place where I want him to be. And I'm sure that even Joseph, Joseph probably, not Jacob, I'm Joseph, I meant to say Joseph, but even Joseph probably felt a little down about the situation because here, you know, he honored his, he honored Potiphar and he, uh, he probably, you know, didn't mind doing what he was doing for him, he, you know, working for him. He was still a slave. He had to, but still uh, Potiphar had put him in a high position over everything in his household. And I'm sure he was feeling kind of bad about what his master's wife was trying to do and uh, probably left a, a bad feeling in his stomach. And, I, and I'm not even sure if he could see the big picture because, you know, we're reading it so we know what happens next. But Joseph didn't know what was going to happen next. All he knows is this woman is trying to, uh, you know, m seduce me. And uh, for, for all he know, Potiphar could have killed him behind that. But it was divine appointment. God knew why Joseph needed to be in the in that prison, which we're going to read about in a minute, at that particular time. So this is divine appointment. This whole situation is covered, covered by the blood. So also, as as we know that Potiphar, he didn't kill Joseph, even after his wife, you know, told her big lie about it. You know, he tried to rape me and all this stuff. He could have killed Joseph, but he didn't. Still divine appointment. Or could it be that maybe Potiphar didn't, you know, he knew Joseph's character. Maybe he didn't really, really, really believe his wife. We, now, that's just surmising. We don't know about, We don't know that. But because he did throw him into prison. He was angry and he threw him into prison. Uh, so, according to Madison Custom, the prison Joseph was put in was more than likely attached to Potiphar's house and probably a part of the king's palace, which was made... Uh, to house the king's prisoners. Divine appointment. Everywhere Joseph went, he put his best foot forward. Because even in the prison, the, the warden fell in love with him and, and put him over everything. He knew everything that went on in the prison because Joseph lived with integrity. Uh, and I'm reminded of that scripture that says, whatever we do, do it heartily. We talked about that. It's unto the Lord and not unto man. And you can read that in Colossians 3, verse 22 through 24. We should always uh, do things if it's God is watching us. So here again, even when he's thrown into prison behind Potiphar's wife lying on him and, and thrown into prison, you know, because he refused to lie with her. So he's unjustly he, uh, thrown there. But still, he still was doing his best and favor was seen and God was with him in the prison. So God's with him when he's a slave. God's with him when he gets thrown in the prison. God is always with us. And God gave him favor even with the prison warden. So during the Bible, the Bible days in the ancient society, whenever an area was conquered, the captured people would become slaves. So Joseph's status at this time was a slave. He was a slave sold in part of her house. And so as a slave, of course, his, his master's wife, we all, we've just read about that, uh, tried to seduce him, ends up getting him thrown into prison. But, you know, like we said before, the principle of doing, doing your best, no matter what applies to us, wherever we go. Uh, somebody told me once that, uh, whenever you leave a, a particular place, it should look better than it did before you came, uh, not worse. And whatever we do, we do it as unto the Lord. You do your best because God is looking at you. God is watching you. Um, we talked about integ integrity before and integrity, uh, example of integrity, you use that word, but uh, 
is somebody drops a hundred dollar bill and you see them drop that hundred dollar bill integrity will have you go and pick, get that hundred dollar bill and say hey you dropped your money and give it to the person a lack of integrity would be you see that person drop that money and you you wait right good until they go and get in their car or get out the way and then you run and get that money and put it in your pocket that's not integrity no and god's not pleased with that so integrity is doing the right thing even when no one's looking that's like the, one of the easiest ways you can understand integrity i'm on i'm on a uh joyce myers talk about putting uh carts back at grocery stores and that's a small thing but that means a lot you know when 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 you nudge and say you know you shouldn't leave this cart right here because it's going to hit somebody's car take the cart and put it back where it's supposed to go uh doing what you need to do rather whether somebody's looking or not well, nobody's gonna know yeah well the lord knows so don't ignore those nudges do the right thing all the time whether somebody's looking or not Remember, God sees you and you will be rewarded for your good. Uh, those are simple things, but anything that you do, uh, God sees you. He always sees you. So make sure your attitude is right. Make sure your motive is right and do it for the right reasons. Amen. So in verse 21, it says, um, let us remember that it is the hand of God on our lives that gives us favor. Some of the notes I wrote down. The hand of God on your life gives you favor. Remember that it's coming from God. It says the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the warden. God is the one that gives you favor in people's eyes. God is the one that causes that person to look at you differently and want to elevate you and promote you because the Lord is with us. So just remember that it's all God. Give him the glory. Give him the praise. God is because I belong to you that you're going to bless me, that you're going to multiply me, that you're going to cause me to increase, amen, that you're going to increase my borders because I belong to you, Jesus. In verse 22 to 23, Joseph even excelled in prison no matter where we are, always do your best. I keep saying that because I want to hit it home. Always do our best, amen, because God is watching. He's watching everything that we do. Um, uh, Somebody said once, I, I taught a Sunday school class and a young man, uh, we were talking about a, a particular dance that they were doing and the dance was pretty vulgar. And, uh, you know, and he was like, I don't see anything wrong with that dance. And I, I said, okay, let me, let me just put it to you this way. Um, anything that you do, if you don't have a problem with Jesus standing right beside you, watching you do what you do, then you're okay. But if you have a problem, if you know that Jesus might not be pleased if he was standing right here watching what you do, then you shouldn't be doing it. So that let that be your barometer, uh, that if Jesus was right here watching me, would I still do this same thing? So that maybe that can be a, a ruler for you. Amen. But we're going to close right there. Uh, next week, we're going to be on chapter chapter 40. Uh, but I want to invite you to, to on this channel. They have a, there's a playlist called uh, The Sinner's Prayer, where there's two videos. Um, and the sinner's prayer is going to teach you and show you why we need Jesus. There's also a, a video on there called teaching about salvation with scriptures explaining our salvation experience. And why do I keep saying it's like a broken record? Because we need to, we need to get saved. We need to have our, our lives in the hands of Jesus. We need to have him living inside of us. Amen. Because judgment day is coming. Time is going to be winding up. And as many as will need to come and, and give their lives to the Lord. And that's what we want you to do. Amen. That's our heart. That's Jesus' heart. He says, I came to seek and to save those who are lost. Amen. So we definitely want you to give your heart to Jesus um, before it's too late. Amen. So amen. Let's just close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord God. Father, I thank you for all those listening. Lord, and anyone out there, Lord God, who do, doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, Heavenly Father, we pray that you cause them to say, what must I do to be saved? Amen. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you're saving them right now. Father, they will repent of their sins, ask you to forgive them of their sins, and ask you to come into their heart and be their Lord and Savior. Father, we give you all the praise and the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I will see you next week. Thank you.